people, I'm back <laughs> and it's been a little while. Yeah, it's probably been about, I don't know, five, six weeks maybe um, since I've last done a video. Um, but anyway, so I thought I would um, just do a little video on the um, on the BMW. Um, it, it's still here, <laughs> obviously. <laughs> um, but I thought I'd do a nice, I'd try and do a nice little video of just sort of like sort of looking around it you know some of you guys might not have seen it or might not be aware of it or or um you know kind of know much about it so yeah we'll sort of we'll do a little sort of tour around it and i'll just sort of go through um you know what's been done to it because at some point it will be sold so um so yeah it'd be nice to do that before before it just sort of goes somewhere Right, okay, so obviously I'm in the garage and I don't have that much room, but we'll see if we can um, kind of get some full-ish pictures in the, uh, in the screen. But yeah, so there it is, look. Um, quite different to the usual BMW R100 sort of build. Um, if we go and have a look over here, so one of the main things which most people will notice is the tank. That's not, that's not a BMW tank on there. Um, all I'm going to say actually <laughs> is it's a highly modified tank. <laughs> from a, well, from a different bike. <laughs> and when I wanna say modified, it's actually been, um, it's actually been stretched. And we have this nice 999 Ducati fuel filler cap in there. And you'll also notice, look, that there is a ridge around there. So when I actually made all this, what I wanted to do was I didn't want to plonk that cap straight in. Um, I wanted to make it look as though it should be in the tank. So um, so yeah, so the actual panel uh, that was that was made for 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 this to go in actually has this um, sort of swage line around it, and it just looks. Um, yeah, it looks mega. It, it looks like it should be in, in there. I think probably quite a lot of people would be hard pushed not to realise that it that it is supposed to be, that it's you know, or it should be there, if you know what I mean. <clears throat> Sorry, it's early and I'm waffling. Um, so we've got the tank. Right. Okay. So I've actually put the phone on a different setting to so that we can try and get get a little bit more into the picture so if we start at the rear we've got the um the rear hub the rear hub drive which has been smoothed all the fins have been uh taken out and smoothed um the brake arm has been modified so that we've got rose joints in it you cannot see the other one because that's tucked up there somewhere <clears throat> uh well there's another one there Actually, this has got a really, really fancy linkage that I made um, for the for the rear for the rear brake. Basically, when you buy rear sets for these, you get uh, you use um, you use your your brake arm from here, and then it goes up to the rear set just there. And you obviously do that, and that pulls that as as it would do on the conventional setup. The problem is with the conventional setup, that pivot point is pretty much in line with the pivot point on the swing arm. So when you push the brake lever, it operates that fine. But when you get aftermarket rear sets, when you have your the, the pivot point up here, away from the center point of the swing arm, when you go over bumps, 
the 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 swing arm go moves up and down and it actually moves the brake arm up and down so if you're applying the brake pedal and you go over a bump the suspension goes up and the brake pedal goes down so you, you kind of need to be a little bit aware of that. I'm sure it's no problem, really, because no one, we don't really use a rear brake that much. But I did want to um, kind of try and rectify that. So behind there, there is quite a, it, it's complicated, but it's not. Um, but it actually utilises the original um, brake um, lever and position. It's just all done by linkages. And now it's, um yeah. It works like that <clears throat> so that's pretty 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 good that is so yeah so we've got the rear set and, and whatnot um then we go to maybe under the seat unit look so that is i don't think you'll be able to see but that is actually carbon let's see if we can get some some sort of weave you can just see it so that's uh yeah all under there is a custom carbon under tray and then we've got obviously one of my seat units on the top but this has actually been modified as well so it's not like my usual ones it, it is actually completely um that is a completely one-off seat unit and then we go around to the back of the seat where we've got a sort of a flushed in tail light with a nice carbon surround all the carbon on here is actually real it's not a sticker whether it's been skinned or it's been made completely out of carbon it is actually real carbon like the under tray you know it's real carbon <clears throat> so that's that's the rear we've obviously got a custom rear subframe which actually is made out of the original uh rear subframe um, it's just it's just obviously been cut and redesigned and re-welded. Um, so, yeah, so that's actually utilising the rear, the original rear subframe. Um, so, yeah, so that's quite that's quite nice as well. We can obviously see the exhaust poking up through there. Um, we have some little carbon um, uh, swing arm pivot covers there. Uh, again, they're skinned over the original um, cover. Got a little carbon cover covering the um, the uh, speedo drive, which is no longer because it's got no speedo. We don't need a speedo. <laughs> we got we got a phone for that. Um, yeah. Then we've got carbon. Um, that's actually alley, which is skinned in carbon. So um, and also it just gives it a little bit of a uh, little bit of dimension, just takes the plainness away. Um, this is obviously all completely custom made. Um, I've got the molds. I think there's possibly some videos on on that, <clears throat> on doing that. Uh, these are again, it's all custom made look, and that follows from the sort of the sides of the the belly pan and then then it kind of goes up and over the swing arm to fill i wanted it to fill all this sort of void in you see and it just looks just looks really really nice and neat uh, again you you don't there is nothing like this on the market or i've never seen anything like that on the on a bmw um, we've got our battery under there just see a little tiny flick of yellow uh, there's a little carbon cover that's covering the battery um, that is all made with big beefy uh, custom battery tray under there uh, we've got what have we got here we've got so we've got our carbs that have been um, st stripped cleaned and, and just painted We've got our car, our intake tubes, which again, they are skinned in carbon. And we've got some little covers that go over the actual rubber, um, over the rubbers there where, where the, the air tube meets to the air box. Um, so we've got carbon covers on there. 
<coughs> excuse me. Um, yeah, and just sort of like the attention to detail, really. I've, you know, like all the, all the um, Jubilee clips, I've tried to line so that all the sort of lettering is kind of at the same level. I know it's silly, but I just like to just try and make anything that could be better better if you know what i mean so it, it just looks neater like that it's the same with all these bolts if we look at these bolts i'm not sure that's going to get in there let's have a look at these i can't really see but the lettering on those bolts are all facing the same way um on all of the all of the fairing bolts the the um, airbox bolts yeah all the lettering is the same way just just to sort of you know the attention to detail all of the bolts have been brush finished everything struggling to get them in here let's do a let's do a switch over camera mode hang on a sec right let's have a see if we can see if we can see now there we go look so they're all sort of turn nicely and all the writing like i say is facing the same sort of direction and now we've got our nice little uh our nice little engine plaque there look but yeah, so you know the attention to detail. I do, I do try and 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 do this sort of the best we can with uh, with what we've got, you know. But yeah, right then. So it's actually just started to rain, so that's what the uh, the noise is that you can probably hear. So anyway, so we go underneath the tank, and yet again, it's all finished lovely under there that is actually a panel there you go you can see my reflection that is a carbon that is an aluminium panel again skimmed in carbon fiber and that goes all under the tank to hide all the all the electrics are up under the tank so this looks as nice underneath as it does on top and that carbon if you look at the reflection that is like a mirror finish, the same as the paint. Um, so yeah, I I really, really, really wanted to to go to town on this so on this little thing. So again, the paintwork on it. Look at the frame. This is this is all automotive paintwork. None of it's uh, none of it's powder coat. Um, you could argue that powder coat is better or harder wearing. I don't actually agree with that one. Um, I've obviously been painting vehicles for 25, 30 years. Um, and to be honest, you don't really get any harder or better wearing paint than automotive uh, paint. So... Um, I like to do all my all my stuff in 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 automotive paint, not powder coat. Everything that you can see here has got um, different uh, different grades, not grades, different lacquer finishes. So this is like a satin finish. Um, this is actually that's a more matte sort of finish. This is um, like a satin lacquer on this. So that goes with the on on the wheels look uh, so we've got like a satin satin bronze and a matte finish for the engine and again gloss two pack for all the all the paintwork and uh, there is a few videos on the paintwork um, the tank is uh the the colors actually the blue and the red are actually the same colors that are on the new the new bmws um so yeah so we've got well we can you can see the 
level of gloss in the paint. Um, you know. So it's literally, yeah, it is it is proper, proper showroom, show finish paint on this thing. So yeah, all the tyres quickly. So the Conti Road Attack 2s, they are mega. They are the most raciest looking tyre that I could find for these for these wheels. Uh, I, I don't get the whole calf racer kind of build thing and then they have knobbly chunky tyres on and this and that you know each to their own i just i just don't get it i wanted some nice sort of sort of road going sort of racy looking tires for this thing and and it took me quite a while to find them they're quite hard to get hold of um but they're a really 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 cool looking tire and they're they're actually quite you know they're quite soft they're quite a good quite a good tire so um so yeah, but anyway, I'm getting a bit distracted. I wanted to try and do this in stages. Obviously, we've got our seat unit again. We've got our foam seat pad, which is horrendously uncomfortable. Um, I did add add this extra bit on to try and uh, save the buttocks a bit. <laughs> it does it does help a bit. Uh, in an ideal world, this probably wants um, uh, refoaming. Uh, and, and maybe covering but i just wanted to go with a whole sort of racy sort of theme um so yeah i use race uh, seat foam for the for the seat unit um so yeah we've got um so if we look at the air box again you'll notice this this took a lot of work to make this um but you'll notice um hang on let me see if i can move back a bit Right, there we go. That's a bit better. Right, if you notice, the airbox actually follows the shape of the frame. So we've got the frame coming up here. And then we've got the airbox just, just following that curve, which it then follows the, the curve of the, um, of the, the top of the frame. It follows the same angle. If you if you know what I mean, um, which just looks mega, I love that. And then we've got our sort of air intake. The air sort of comes in under here, and it also you can't see that. That's been there. You go. That's all been cut out, and um, the uh, the air comes in through there which then goes into the original air box under here and the original filter so there's no messing around with uh, pod filters and all this malarkey that is all the original oem air box under there but it but for me it just it just looks great um again we've got the um let me see if i can come back a little bit more there you go. I'm now under my bench, if I sound slightly different. Um, so you can obviously see the angle or the rake of the bodywork, how it all flows. This is how I like to get the bike to sort of look fast, just sort of sitting still, like the, the sort of rake of the bike. The bike does look a little bit sort of stubby at the minute because I've got the camera set to um, to a different a different setting. Um, but it's actually quite a lot longer than than it looks in this this picture. Yeah, so we've got all our all our sort of lines look nice. Again, you can you can see underneath the tank and the seat look is like as nice as it is on top. So yeah, so let's come around. Whoa. I'm on my knees again for my sins. So we come around to the front belly pan look. So this is made in two halves. We've got our join down there. And then we've got our fixings to the frame. Um, our exhaust, obviously. So this is stainless steel, which was uh, sandblasted and then brushed with a Scotch-Brite, which gives it a really, I really like this finish. 
I'm not a fan of chrome and shine too much. So this gives it a really nice finish, almost uh, looks like titanium. Um, so yeah, so we've got the exhaust done um, in, in that finish. And actually it's it's really quite a complicated exhaust because um, I will try and show you, you the other side. I'll have to move the bike around a bit, but I'll show you the other side. But yeah, it's quite a complicated exhaust. Uh, so we go up to the top there, look. You stand up again. So we go to the top. We've got obviously, obviously our forks have been dropped through a little bit just to lower the stance a bit. Uh, we've got a nice top yoke. I can't remember the make. It does say on it, but I can't, I can't see it actually. Let's have a look whether the camera will pick it up. No, there is an etching just under there. I can't see it. Um, so yeah, so we've got we've got the top, which is really clutter free, which is what I like and what I want. Um, all the switch gears been refurbished. It's all been painted. Look in this nice. Um, it's it's a metallic. Well, it's black with with like a glitter in it. So it's all it's all the same stuff. It just gives it that more more of a dimension than than black than just sat in black. Um, so all my black is usually done like that. So we've got all of our switch gear done. We've got our Renfrew grips on, which I love because they're really soft and nice. Again, it goes with the kind of race thing. Um, we're not going to be having leather cork <laughs> grips on our little calf racer. Um, so what have we got here? So we've got the tops, um, the tops of the shocks have these little discs that have been machined. Um, obviously, the these are just bonded on with with just a little ring of sealer around it. So if these need to come off, you just slide a blade under there, cut it off, do whatever you need to do, uh, clean the sealer off, reseal them, and just pop them back on. They're only they're only um, you know just held on enough as such they're not going to fall off but they're not they're not caked on with loads of sealer that's what i'm saying but yeah so we've got the front light here we've got our the fixing down is behind this cover can you can you see this little cover here so that basically hides the bracket down there and then it just comes around the front and just finishes it nicely down there so again this this little this plate here was a bracket for the light um can you see there you go you can see that that's the bracket so that's all custom all this covers custom we've got little uh, fork covers stand fork stanchion covers there top and bottom that have all been cut in and and painted um we've got a braided hoses Again, which are custom, which go down to the nicely painted calipers and whatnot. Again, all brushed stainless steel fittings, like hardware. Uh, we come to the mud guard, which I think I did a video. I think there's a video on making this. Um, but yeah, again, all completely custom. The finish is amazing. Looks like glass as does the rest of the bike there we go um, yeah again all the levers you can there yeah, that's a nice light you can kind of see the the sort of satin finish there chokes been deleted uh, the handlebars were or the clip on sorry were chrome these were sandblasted and then scotched um, just to to take the shine off the chrome so yeah so we've got there yeah there is hundreds of bits on this bike it's it's, it's crazy I, I i can't really remember everything that's uh, that's been done um but yeah it's uh, it's certainly a very very nice a very nice build and uh, i've enjoyed doing it immensely um you know it's been mega like I say, everything's been refreshed or refurbed. The forks have, have been uh, painted and, you know, new new oil. There's obviously new fluids in it throughout. Um, the discs were all cleaned up and 
painted, the bolts were all polished. Um, yeah, yeah, everything's been refreshed, refreshed really. The only thing uh, that hasn't been done um, is the engine. And as a rule, f for my way of thinking, if an engine's fine, there's no need to open it up. Um, I personally think an engine's always best left um, sealed from the manufacturer. Um, I really, really don't like opening them up. But on this occasion, on this one, I did pull the heads off and the barrels uh, purely for paint reasons. Um, and it and it is very a very simple sort of engine. So yeah, so the barrels and heads came off. Everything looked nice inside the 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 um the cam followers down in there. I think that's what they are on these the the followers. Yeah, because they're the push rods in the tubes. The cam followers were all nice. Um the cam the cam lobes were nice. Uh, the bores were, were good. Um so it was all it was all nice. Nothing was replaced. It was just cleaned and, and freshened up. Um obviously just new gaskets, um new new uh plug leads, plugs, um caps, new um cables uh yeah so yeah um every, every everything uh, everything bar the internals of the engine and the rear drive shaft hub section that was unopened as well um i didn't really see the the need to open that again i would prefer to leave it sealed there's you know there's nothing wrong with it um so yeah other than the hub and the internals everything else has been refreshed we've got um taper bearings in the front um from all balls we've got a really really nice yss rear shock uh, adjustable shock so we've got adjustable uh, spring preload down there and we've got adjustable damping from that lovely little dial there. Really nice shock actually, really, really nicely made. Um, obviously you can get more expensive shocks. I think this was about 350 quid, but um, but yeah, really nice shock. Um, and actually it, <laughs> the bike rides along really, really quite nicely. It's just bloody uncomfortable. <laughs> Right there we go. So we're on the other side now. Sorry about the light. It's um, it's not fantastic in here. Um, hopefully it is kind of doing the bike justice. But I uh, I suppose in an ideal world I should do one of these videos in a uh, you know in a in a nicely lit um stu studio. But let's just tuck that out of the way. That's the for the charger. Um yeah. So this side <laughs> exactly the same as the other side. Pretty much. We've got a nice little. Dust Monkey uh, Creations tag in there. There's the uh, the ignition um, in there. So that's our ignition place. Um, again, all our carbon bits on there. Um, yeah, rear sets again, custom linkages. These work really nice, actually. Really, um, you know, you can you can hear how positive they are. Yeah, really nicely, really nice sort of setup that is. Again, we've got our cover look that goes over the swing arm, top of the swing arm. We've got underneath, under there. You see? Can we see any carbon this side? Not really. Uh, right, exhaust. Yes, so. So the exhaust obviously comes along the sides and then it goes up into the centre and then around here and then up here and obviously out of here. So that is really tight and... Uh, and tricky that exhaust took me a long time to make 
uh, but really pleased with it because it, it, it looks mega. Uh, and then we come to our just our little very simple custom silencer and uh, and and our little bracket again. You know, nothing too fancy. Again, just trying to sort of follow lines of the frame and and whatnot. So we've got our bracket there. And then the last piece, really, some might say the worst piece because we all hate this part on a bike, the number plate. <laughs> so originally I was going to go for a, you know, a conventional top mounted, central mounted number plate um off of uh off of like a a, a bracket quite a long bracket coming off but because the tail of the bike is is actually so short the the bracket would have to come out so far and the plate would have would have sort of been at such an angle it would have looked it just probably wouldn't have quite looked right and I really wanted to keep the back of the bike as clear as I could. So a pet hate of mine is, is actually side mounted uh, number plates. I'm really not a fan, but sometimes you just have to do what you've got to do. So I thought, right, OK, we're going to have a side mounted plate. Let's make a feature out of it rather than trying to hide it. So if we look there we have got a really nice bracket that again follows in the swing arm and comes down there and that is our mount for our number plate let me see if i can just move back a little bit so you can kind of see how it goes so we kind of just kicks out just quite nicely so actually even from sort of any angle it it looks it looks like it should be there it looks kind of like a manufactured uh mount and then we've got our we've got our little number plate there like i say sadly we do have to have them they're not the nicest things in the world but there you go it, it was a compromise that that i was happy to sort of make um but yeah, so there we go. It's uh, Sorry this has been a bit of a yabba yabba yabba, but I just thought some of you guys might uh, like it and and sort of appreciate appreciate actually the hundreds, probably thousands of hours that have gone into making this bike. Like I say, everything, everything you pretty much can see that's certainly that's got paint on it has uh has had some sort of modification or is you know down to the bar end weights again all been done all been refreshed painted um this this bike i would like to think that it could rock up at any show and look as good as any other bikes there um hopefully you guys will agree you may not you may think it looks like a piece of poo but but it's my piece of poo. <laughs> but yeah, let's see if we can get it in there. Look. Yeah, so I'm really sorry about the um, not being able to get the bike into sort of a full frame. It's just, you know, I'm just in my little, um, my little garage, sadly. And it's tipping it down outside. And the bike's spotlessly clean and immaculate, so... It's not going outside, <laughs> but there's there's loads of pictures on it on my Instagram and 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 bits and pieces on YouTube as well. If if anyone wants to have a have another little look and uh, sort of see some of the steps that were done to to sort of make bits and pieces, but uh, but yeah, like I say, um, yeah, it is actually going to go up for sale uh, because it is of no use to me. Um, I built it. It went to the bike shed show. Um, it had an absolutely amazing, amazing response at the bike shed show. Um, then it was in Built magazine. Um, and I've also been um, 
invited to show it down at the bike shed in London in their calf um, for it to go under one of their arches. Uh, but sadly, to this still to this point now, I have I just haven't been able to get it down there. I I don't own a van, and um, and it's just trying to find sort of someone with a with a van that's kind of you know willing to cart the bike down there and unload it and whatnot and blah blah blah. So um, so yeah, as of yet, it's um it's it's still here whether whether i will get it down there while i still own it i don't know uh, i would like to um but we'll see we'll see what happens but there you go there's the r100 and uh yeah i hope you've kind of enjoyed that little walk around Right, there we go. That's just, just a little walk around, really, of the BM. Um, yeah, not, not really a doing video today, just, just more, of a, more, of a, more, of a, more of a show and tell sort of day. Um, but yeah, it's, um, it's, just, it's just a fantastic looking thing. And what I did forget to mention, actually, was um, I was going through the history um, you know the paperwork there's there's quite a lot of paperwork and i actually found a um note um from the from the garage it was actually a demo uh bike it was brought in um so it, it was first registered to a dealer and it was a, a, a demo bike and there's a there's a really lovely little note to the first owner of the bike explaining where the 750 miles has come from uh, basically the bike was the bike was delivered um, from BMW um, to um, Ireland um, and then from Ireland it was ridden back into the UK um, and that was the sort of first sort of ride of, of the bike the de the dealer the, the guy from the dealer had it delivered into to Ireland and then I think he said um, I can't remember what the letter says. I had a, a lovely, um, a lovely trip from Ireland uh, back to the UK on it, and 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 um, and that's kind of basically how it got got sort of most of the miles on by, by his um, by his trip. Um, um, but yeah, yeah, no, it's really really nice little little story to it. So um, you know, it's just something else that kind of you know it kind of goes with the bike really. But um, yeah, so anyway. Thank you for um, having a watch and, uh, you know, kind of keep, keep, keep tuned. I know I'm not doing a lot at the minute. It's, um, it's just, it's just hard with, uh, you know, it's, it's hard trying to, you know, stay afloat, isn't it? These days, what with the, this and that going on, it's, um, it's not easy, but, um, but yeah, just, uh, just keep posted and I'll, um, the Hornet's got a, uh, I've I've actually got the um, the steering uh, sp uh, not spline. What what am, what am I thinking? Stem. The st the steering stem's done, so the forks are back on, so I can now carry on with the bodywork. Um, the next stage on that, I think, is the exhaust because uh, I'm going to have to cut out the belly pan on that. Um, so yeah, so I need to I need to order some exhaust tube. And then we're going to crack back on with that, and uh, because uh, I got to say that is looking mega. Now the now the the forks sit properly on the bike, yeah, it looks mega. But um, anywho, I'm getting distracted again. So uh, anyway, um, I'll see you next time. <laughs>